everybody. Hey, this is Ghost of the T Fox here with a little um, demonstration of how I make my paw socks for Etsy. Uh, I'll go ahead and show the show you those right now. They're pretty cool, um, extremely popular on my store. So I will go ahead and show you a pair right now. Our um, different examples that we have here of the socks that I make would be, of course, like these. These are our um, <clears throat> these are the long socks, the thigh high socks. And that's actually what I will be making this evening. Thigh high socks with a nice blue paint job on those. Very nice, very shimmery, almost like a um, um, printed type of um, ink shirt. Uh, we have this one here. This one has extremely thick paints because uh, this one was a uh, test I was doing where instead of brushing it on, it was left to sit in a very thick layer. It took almost an entire day to dry. There's that example. And I think these are the large sizes. And this one was really a fun one to do. Multiple colors, took a little bit longer to make, but this is one that I think is uh, really pretty cool. Uh, and if there's a faster way I can make something like that, then I think I will offer that on my store as well. So you wanted to see a video of me creating something and that's what we're gonna do. This is the stock I'll be using. A uh, thigh high pair of stockings. I got mine from, uh, I actually almost don't remember. Oh, from eBay. Got mine from eBay. Um, if you're interested, I could leave a link in the description. Uh, these are thigh highs, and these will be in um, pink. I believe they wanted pink, yes. These want to be pink with a black trim, and I actually uh, have some photos of pink with a black trim that I've made before. I'll leave those there for you to take a look. Those are pretty nice. Oh, they're actually gaining in popularity, which is fantastic. And uh, yeah, that's what this pair will be. Um, just like that. Now this tutorial, I'm probably going to take a little bit longer with these since I'm doing a um, demonstration. Because I don't want to go too fast and uh, not share with you um, exactly what I'm doing. But right now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make sure the sock is nice and even, that little toe piece. I'm just trying to make sure it goes nice and even across the uh, whole piece of the foot. And the next thing I do is I take the stencil and I lay it on place. Uh, try to get as even as I can. With the uh, with the cardboard cutout, so it keeps it nice and centered, nice and centered. Take my wonder clips, clip it into place. It keeps the stencil from sliding around and potentially ruining the piece. And the uh, smaller wonder clips, I actually got these uh, got these from Amazon. They're a lot more affordable than the actual brand new wonder clips. Uh, but, you know, they're, they're not bad quality. They're not really bad quality at all. I'm just clipping any area where, that I feel may raise up or may potentially have uh, paint leaking underneath of the stencil. So yeah, just things like that. Just tack down any places like that. I think it looks pretty good. Uh, and then I also like to tack down this piece to keep it from flopping around while I'm working because I don't want it to uh, potentially crash into my paintbrush and get paint on the unwanting areas of the sock where I don't want paint to get Okay, so we got our found my magnets, thank goodness, found those. And I just take my little magnet here. Uh, it's a very small magnet. These are neodymium magnets. Rare earth magnets, uh, they have a, a um, potential strength that is around 10 times stronger than a ceramic magnet, which basically that's like a um, refrigerator magnet, give or take, more, more or less like a refrigerator magnet. And uh, very strong, you do not ever want to ingest these or put these up your nose or anything of that nature. So yeah, there's that. And we have our area tacked down in the center and on the edges. You want to make sure there are no gaps in this kind of kind of procedure. And then what you do next, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take my fantastic puffy paint, 3D paint, which is really awesome. Goes on thick. Um, usually only takes one layer, but um, yeah, pretty cool. So yeah, the trick with this is to uh, get a area on the sock that you want to start, I tend to start counterclockwise. I feel it's a little easier. And um, decap your puffy paint. And you can actually go on the edges of your stencil. Go on quite thick because these are going to be um, meant for durability and meant to last. So you don't want to go sparsely with this. This is a very bright pink. It's um, neon pink. It goes on really bright and then cures to a really vibrant, nice pink that um, I believe it actually glows under a black light. So if you have a black light, these will show up really nice, the neon pink. 
and I'm using a synthetic, I believe it's a nylon brush, black nylon brush. It's really, really nice for getting these um, colors nice and smooth and into the uh, into the fabric. So you just do that, and you just smooth out best that you can with just letting the weight of the brush do the uh, do the work. Uh, don't worry about brush strokes uh, too much. Just smooth as best as you can. The brush strokes tend to die down as the piece dries. But if you want to go back in there and add like a little droplet here, that's perfectly fine. Just do not press too hard, and you should be great. Just add a little bit more of that delicious paint to that. And um, yeah, just let me know if you like this camera angle. It's a new angle I'm trying, considering that um, I, um, my tripod is kind of broken, in a sense. My um, uh, my freestanding tripod. I have a tripod. It's a, um, oh gosh, I think it's called octopus, octopus arm or spider arm kind of tripod. So basically you can wrap it around just about any knob or pipe and uh, mounts a camera, which is really nice. And um, the way I'm actually adding this is I'm adding it directly to the edge of the stencil. Because if one doesn't add right to the edge of the stencil, paint could get underneath of it and then of course it would run, smear, and not get that crisp, really nice crisp edge that you desire in a piece like this. And the nice thing about puffy paint is that um, it allows you to go in thick with the paint. You can go in pretty thick, and it, and it, it can dry in one coat, which is really nice. It takes, um, takes a few hours, but the results look really good. It's a nice shiny finish. Uh, the good thing about puffy paints is that some colors come in large bottles. Uh, blues, blacks, reds, I think maybe greens or yellows, come in really big uh, tubular bottles. Uh, I don't have one on me right now, but they're really nice for covering large areas in a quick amount of time. And uh, sometimes I will actually use the large black black bottle for lining these socks, which is what I'll be doing with these, taking the uh, big bottle and just going around the edges of these by hand. Everything is done by hand. So uh, yeah, it's like I said, it, it takes time to do, but the results look really good. And uh, I've thought about getting professional, like printing machine and such to uh, do these socks. I just don't know if it would work out for me because my uh, the space I don't have a lot of space, and um, they do cost money. They do cost money, and um, once you invest so much money into something like that, you got to promote, you got to advertise, and you just. Like the first year or two is just making up the cost that you put into that device and considering that you know earning a living right now is important that's kind of not really feasible at this time but maybe one day maybe one day that could be um, could be an idea that could be tried so there's that. All right i think this sock is ready for demolding uh, one thing you may notice when doing this is um Air bubbles. You may get the occasional air bubble. It's not a big deal. You just flick your brush in there, pop it, smooth it back out. Um, like I said, these little things just happen. Not a big deal. A little dabble of paint and then just smooth it out. Just go wee. Mm -hmm. There you go. You just yeeted the bubble. Okay, so this one's ready for demolding or uh, de stenciling, however, however it's said. And what you do first is you take your magnets, gently pull from the back, make sure your magnets don't go sliding together, because if they do, all kinds of silly stuff can happen. Take your magnet, lift the napkin between it, and catch your first magnet. And then you take your other magnet from the back side, pull the whoops, whoopsie, it slipped, but we're good, we're good. It's just a very minor slip. Take the back of your napkin again, and then you catch your other magnet, just like that. It's your other magnet. It usually takes just two napkins. You can use any kind of napkin, it can be dollar store napkins. The cheapest napkin you can find, the cheaper the better. That one. Uh, these are Mardi Gras napkins brand. Not not sponsored, but just letting you know that's what I use. Um, they're pretty durable. Um, durable, not ter terribly expensive. Uh, the only thing about them I would say is be careful because the print does run if you get it wet. It will uh, stain something if you happen to get it wet. So there is that, but pretty good napkins. Take off your pieces here, your clips. Your clips might have a little bit of paint on them, not a big deal. 
just wipe that off before it dries and you should be fine. Um, I'm holding this down with my thumb on the side so it doesn't go slip and sliding all over the place. Take off your clips and when you get to your last one, steady your hand, gently lift up the side of this and peel it back. And there is your first, um, I guess you would call it painted print or painted saw, um, pa saw, paw sock, paw sock. There's your first one. And uh, yeah, I hope this tutorial was nice and um, hope it was um, informative. Uh, if you have any other questions or anything, please leave those in the comment box below. Uh, like I said, for this piece here, it's technically done, but this is getting a black trim, so if there's any rough edges that need touching up or anything, that can be hidden with the black trim, so it's not a big deal. This just gets repeated with the other sock, and then um, these are set, a, set aside to dry. So yeah, there is that. Uh, thank you so much for watching, folks. A uh, little tutorial here. Uh, this is Coaster the T-Fox. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell icon to get the latest updates from this channel, and um, don't remember, um, just have a great day, and thanks for watching. Bye for now.